Hi everybody. Hello there. I'm Jerry. And I'm Linda. It's time for Mailbag Monday once again. I think this is going to be the, one of the best Mailbag Mondays we've ever had. For some reason, we came up with a lot of really good topics today that I think you'll be interested in. On today's show... Can you park in the driveway? Should all alligators be removed? And bubble wrap. If you have an east or west facing garage, your garage may heat up, especially in the afternoons if it's west facing. There is a solution and it's called, believe it or not, bubble wrap. What is the most important thing in picking a location in the villages? And why does my drinking water smell so bad? All that and more. Hit it, Wally. Send us your questions, we've got your answers, Jerry and Linda's Mailbag Monday. We hope you enjoyed Thursday's live video. Live videos, you know, we're, we're getting used to them and, and they're fun to do. Kind of puts you on the spot because uh, you're a little more guarded because we don't want to have bloopers on live TV. Yeah, it's going to so, happen though. So we, we, we try to get through it, but we had a lot of <laughs> critical emails uh, about the show, about me interrupting her, about about uh, her fidgeting back and forth, about her microphone. Hey, live is hard. Live shows are hard. You know, live is hard because we don't have a script. We have a script here. We have lots of papers in front of us. We know what we're going to say. I've got it color-coded pink for me, blue for him. That's, I know that's sexist. But on live, we don't know who's going to say what at what time, and we're looking at the comments and commenting with the, with the, our audience. So it is hard. Yeah. <laughs> time for our viewer video question. This is Steve, and he's got a question about living in different areas of the villages. Good morning, Jerry and Linda. My name is Steve and I'm from Ontario, Canada. But right now, my wife and I are renting in the village of Charlotte, not too far from where you guys live. So I wondered if you could tell me if there are any advantages or disadvantages of living in certain areas within the villages. We have noticed since we've been here that as, as you go south, the residents tend to be younger, which is more in our age bracket. But as you go north, a lot of the activities and golf courses are there. Anyways, see you when we get here. We're already here, thanks. Steve, that is a great question, and it's not one that's easy to answer because different things appeal to different people. I'll start with the age factor that you mentioned. Yeah, the farther you go, the younger the people are. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and this goes along with Steve's question. This is from Jay and Susan. What do you guys think is the most important aspect when picking a location in the villages? Distance to the square. Yeah, that's what they listed, distance mm -hmm. to the square. Right distance to medical or distance to the recreation centers. Mm -hmm. And all those are things to consider. And I reached out to one of our, our people that I think is really in the know here in the villages, and they told me the same thing. Of course, you know the old real estate adage, right? Yeah. Location, location, location. location. And that depends on what you want to go to. If you're a big time golfer, you want to be near the golf courses. Right. If you're a shopper or you, you just love to cook, you might want to be near a grocery store. Right. You know, if you're a people person, you want to go to the more active areas. Yeah, yeah. And there definitely are some areas that are more active than others, as in the younger people living south of 44. Right. All the new construction, the new town Middleton down there that uh, that's going to be full of people with, with children. Yeah. Maybe you like to be around children. Mm -hmm. So all those things are going to go into it. But he said that he, he found that living in between to town squares is a good thing because you can pick and choose entertainment at one one night you might like entertainment at the other yeah. the shopping in one square which the squares have pretty good shopping don't yeah. they yeah they do or you may want to go to the other one but uh there are rec centers scattered everywhere and there are 114 pools yes so you're going to be close to a pool mm -hmm. really there's no bad location we don't think uh you'll probably do just fine yeah well, Brent Sizer also asked us, do you find that houses that are closer to a public square are more expensive? I don't think, I, I, well, I do think that they would be very desirable yeah. to live, like Lakeshore Cottages up yes. there in Sumter oh. Landing. Mm -hmm. If you don't plan on using a car and you just have a golf cart or you want to walk, you want to be close to the things you want to. So that would be, yes, that would probably drive the price up a little bit. Mm -hmm. But I noticed that prices are coming way down. Yeah. From a year ago, from two years ago, they're way down. Whereas, I remember looking this up for you, homes at $200,000 or so, 
There are a bunch in that price price range right now. That's great. I looked it up. That's great. And I also did some checking on the price per square foot. And I've got, I wrote it down here. I was very surprised. The new construction appears to be cheaper per square foot than pre-owned. Of course, when you have a pre-owned home, you add crown molding, you add plantation shutters, you add epoxy on the garage floor, you paint the driveway. You know, maybe you get a mini split or you enclose the uh, lanai. So those things all drive up the cost and thus lead you to have a higher per square foot average. But wow, here are some numbers. These are new homes. I looked it up and you could buy a Dove. That's a new model of home. Three bedrooms, three baths, 1,928 square feet for $243 a square foot. Okay. okay. Another new home. This is a tall pine, three bedrooms, two baths, 1,476, a little smaller. $224 a square foot. Okay. And you've got uh, the Spoonbill, three bedroom, two bath, 1976 square feet, $272 yeah. per square foot. So those are all new construction. I looked at a couple of, of pre-owned that were a little higher priced. And listen to this, a three bedroom, three bath, pre-owned home, was selling for $446 a square foot. Uh, three and two, three bath, or three bedroom, two bath was selling for $422. And I found another one that was three bedroom, two and a half baths, $514 a square foot. And this is a pre-owned home. So you're getting the more bang for your buck for uh, newer homes then, right? Well, I no. think that probably on those pre-owned homes, mm -hmm. They probably had a cul-de-sac lot. Maybe. Maybe they overlooked a golf course. Mm -hmm. Maybe they had a swimming pool. All those things drive up the uh, yeah. per square foot cost. But mm. wow, a pre-owned home for $514 a square foot. Yeah. And by the way, I looked up the most expensive home I found for sale right now with the Village's listing service was $1.9 mm. And of course, I could have overlooked something. And yeah. that's just what I found. But, you know, I was looking. That's yeah. hmm. Can we afford a $1.9 million? No. No, we could oh, not. Wow, no. darn. But I hope that somewhat answered your question. Oh, it's good to live everywhere. The closer to the town squares might give you a little bump in price. Tom and Becky are from Boonville, Indiana. Hey, I know where that is, Tom and Becky. That's down there near Perry Central, down toward Evansville. Been there before. Got lost down there before. Yeah. They want to know, can we leave a parked car in the driveway if we own two cars and a golf cart? Well, and don't get me wrong. I, I know that this is, on the grand scheme of things, it's nothing. It's nothing. Yeah. It's not even anything to worry about. No. But you've got these beautiful homes. Why park a car out in front? You know, it, it just it breaks up the whole thing. You, you pay money for new landscaping, and you park your car there. You paint your home. It looks so good. You park your car out there. You paint your driveway. You, put you paint your driveway. You cover it up with a car. <laughs> yes, you can yeah. park your car in your driveway. It doesn't matter if you have two cars and a golf cart. You could have no cars and no golf carts and still park your car out there. It's up to you. Yeah. You know, we have nice neighbors. You couldn't ask for nicer people around us than we have. One of them has three cars in their driveway. You know, I don't like it, but I'm pretty sure they don't care what no, I like. No, It's your driveway. You can do as you please. Is it my turn again? Well, it also goes on. There's a two-part question really oh, for this. A two-part. <laughs> Two-parter. It's a bonus. <laughs> Will and Phoenix. How about that? I like that. F-E-N-I-X. Mm -hmm. They ask, we watch every morning. We notice in residential areas, we do not see vehicles parked in driveways or on streets. Do covenants prohibit parking outside your homes? This is one where you would have to look at the very district that you live in and see what their guidelines are. Basically, the streets are owned by uh, the county that you live in. Mm -hmm. You know, they're not private streets except for the courtyard villas. Yeah. And uh, you'd have to look up the rules, but golly, I hope we don't ever go to parking on the streets. That kind of made it really bad for us one day because somebody was delivering something to us and then backed out into a car on the street. Yep. So that made for a bad afternoon. Sure did. <laughs> you know, last week we showed you the grandkids doing some work in the yard. I'm a, I'm a big proponent of teaching them of, of work and reward for your work. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, you know, we keep a, a jar here for each grandchild. And when they do something good, we'll put a, a buck or two in there. Yeah. Actually, they earned $15 for working in our yard last week. Yeah. 
Yeah, we even took them for haircuts. And uh, that's good when you leave it up to grandpa to get your kid a haircut because he can do what he wants, right? With the, You can get the high and tight or whatever. So they looked great when they were finished. And we took them to play golf and they went to the driving range at Sarasota. That's something if you come to the villages, you should treat yourself to a trip to the Sarasota yeah. golf facility where they have a driving range and you hit balls out into a lake. It's a lot of fun and they had a ball. They did a great job too. I think we had some future golfers yeah. with our family. I especially like the way the oldest was helping the youngest that day. That was really, really nice. great. We didn't even ask him to and he did. He took it upon himself to help the younger one. The 12 year old was helping the five year old. And that was just, that was endearing. And we <laughs> took him to a driveway concert. Oh yeah, that was good. The Ladies of Liberty mm -hmm. sang. They, they are great. They sing patriotic songs and uh, old favorites and yeah. And I don't think the grandkids were all that thrilled with it, but uh, we were. We were. We enjoyed it. <laughs> How would you feel if all alligators were removed from the villages? No one has proposed that. But we saw that in a neighboring development, very close, a gentleman lost his hand last week mm -hmm. and uh, to an alligator. He was reeling in a fish, and I don't know the whole story, but... Uh, then another place in uh, another place in uh, Florida, uh, a lady was killed, yeah. and we hear tales of alligators grabbing pets and things. Well, I even saw in the newspaper this morning that there was a, a young man fishing in a lake in Tennessee, and he caught an alligator. <laughs> Are you kidding? In a lake in Tennessee? Well, very much off topic, but uh, no. But I'm saying the alligators. Yeah, alligator. The alligators are all around. How can you take them out of our area? Well, I'm just saying it. it we live here and people, could you sunbathe in your yard if you had a, a, a home on a lake? Yeah, that'd be hard. Would you lay out on a blanket in your grass? No, <laughs> you're right. When you go fishing, can you feel comfortable now that you know that when no. you reel in a fish? No. How about going on the kayak? You want to go? Absolutely not. No. So there are a lot of things that are yeah. really cool about Florida that you can do with the water, but you have to be afraid of alligators. So I know they were here first. They're yeah. dinosaurs. Yeah. They've been here for a million years. Um, I don't know more. Yeah. So I wouldn't feel good about yeah. killing them, or but is there a point where we might have to get them removed from the villages? No, what do you think? We'd like to hear your input on it, that's all. This next question is from Kentucky Girl in Tennessee. Hi, Jerry and Linda. It seems like there are a lot of snakes in the villages. Do you know if anyone has had a snake to get in the golf bags? Seems like a bad day for someone to reach in the golf bag just to encounter a snake. Thank you very much for the question. I'm glad to get that because it is a general consensus that there are snakes all over the place. How many have we seen in five and a half years? Two, maybe, and they weren't in our yard. They were in somebody else's yard. They well, called Jerry, come get this snake, Jerry. We've seen a few in our yard. I've seen a few in our, in our, our first yard. year here. Black snakes. Maybe. But we don't see many. Mm -hmm. And when we hear about snakes, most often they are... Uh, what you call a rat snake, which is really a cool snake. It's it's not poisonous. Or a black razor, which is not poisonous. But there have been incidents of snakes crawling into people's shoes. When you yeah. leave your garage door open, even if you leave it open a little, maybe you want to get a breeze, some things can crawl in there. But we've never had one in our house, not in our lanai, not in our garage. We've never had one in a golf bag or in a shoe. And tell you the truth, I like to see snakes. I think they're basically good for the environment. Yeah, I don't want them crawling out of a golf bag, though. <laughs> I did hear of a, a cottonmouth. That's a water moccasin uh, down in Marsh Bend, oh. you know, down there. Yeah. And, and again, when you hear about a snake six, six miles away, you know it's not that common. We, we wouldn't even mention it, right? Right. So don't worry. Don't worry about don't it. Worry. Just keep your garage down. Yeah, yeah. And put a cover over your golf bag. <laughs> Tom and Becky, our Hoosier friends, have another question. They ask, we see storage as an issue. Where do people put luggage and Christmas decorations? I'll leave that to my Christmas decoration expert. Well, both. At luggage, we used to keep our luggage in the attic in the garage. And I felt like it was a little too hot. We had some luggage we've had for many, many years. And up there, uh, keeping the in the summer, it gets quite hot. And the wheels started disintegrating, just kind of crumbling. So we keep them now in our closet on the top shelf in our in our master closet. Uh, our Christmas decorations do go in the garage. We don't keep any candles or anything that's really soft plastic up there. So. And we've never seen a mouse. 
Yeah. And we've not had moths or anything like that. But we'll keep them in the plastic containers and yeah. they're, they're yeah. safe up there. And so far, so good. So far, so good. It's time, time for, for bubble, bubble wrap. wrap. Hi, Jerry and Linda. Today I'm doing a story that is about bubble wrap. This is an aluminum foil product you can put in your garage to cut down the heat. Loyal Jerry and Linda fans will recognize this bubble wrap, but this is part two of an earlier version. I found the afternoon heat was just too much for one layer of insulation, so today I'm adding a second layer of insulation. Many of our garages have hurricane reinforcements, which make adding styrofoam insulation difficult. Some suggested that I remove the cross beams, but that sounds like a real hassle. So I'm doing it the easy way. This large roll of the stuff costs just over 50 bucks. It's easy to cut and install. I used metal tape to secure it in spots. This time I added it around my tinted windows to keep the heat from getting in. It's a lot of cutting and a lot of placing, but you put this stuff on your garage door and you can keep some of the heat out. I'm Peter Bernard and that's this week's Bubble Wrap. Thank you, Peter. Uh, again, insulation is so important here because it's hot. It's hot. It's hot down here. And even though we're only March, we've had some hot days. And it's going to get hotter in April and even hotter in May and June and then in July and August. Yeah. Look out. Yeah, March is kind of a funny month. Uh, sometimes in the morning it's 48 degrees and the next morning it's going to be 70 in the morning. Mm -hmm. So March is kind of a kind of a strange month. We're not letting go of winter. We're not we're not into summer. So March is very has a varied temperatures. And Peter had already told us how to insulate the garage doors, mm -hmm. but now he has an extra layer of insulation. It'll be interesting to see uh, how that affects the temperature in his garage in the days going forward. This next question is from Kathy Barrett. After being here two months, why does our water smell, the washing machine, the ice maker? I'll see you when you get here. <laughs> Kathy, that's a, a very good question. It really didn't bother me when we came, but it bothered her a lot. Mm -hmm. So we did some research at the time and we bought a Nova water system. And so when I got your question, I thought I'd reach out to the people that basically invented that and they're going to give you an answer. This is Brad from Nova Water Filters. Hi, Jerry and Linda. This is Brad from Nova Filters. Just wanted to answer Kathy's questions about why the water smells and the ice smells and the laundry smells. So basically, with straight tap water here, it's very harsh. The smell and the taste of the water is seriously affected by it. So we add the whole house water filter, and that removes chemicals, sediment, and chlorine. That's going to give you clean, safe drinking water throughout the house. You'll also notice by doing that that your skin, hair, and laundry won't be so dry because the chemical sediment and chlorine not only dry your skin and hair, but that clogs up your pores, so that's a nice relief. Also, you'll notice that your laundry will come out cleaner, whiter, and softer. And you'll see that your soap lather increases. You get better suds with all your soap. You use less soap. And also you'll notice a, the reduction in buildup on your fixtures. Now, it's not removing the calcium. That's where a water softener comes in, which is a nice addition. But the filter on its own is what plenty of people, in fact, 80% of our customers find that does it on their own, always with an option to add a water softener. And if you want to go to our website, you can check out the videos and all the literature. It's novafilters.com. Thanks again, Jerry and Linda. You have a great day. Brad, thank you. Uh, we've had really good luck. We even removed the filter from our refrigerator. You just have to buy a filter for the, for the ice maker and the water in your refrigerator. And we removed that and uh, our water is just great. Yeah. 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 We, we don't smell anything from the water. Brent Sizer has another question and it's a good one. Does each village have their own unique floor plan or are the same floor plans repeated in each village? Mm -hmm. Well, if I had answered this two years ago, I would say you'll see the same homes all throughout the villages, right. but it's not really true. It depends when your home was built. Mm -hmm. Now we're in kind of a classic, the Aspen, mm -hmm. and there you can find Aspens to the north and you can find Aspens to the south. But there are other ones that have been replaced frequently, and I don't know that they're making aspens anymore either. Because when they go to a different method of construction, if it's vinyl, an aspen wouldn't be an aspen. If it's uh, the prefab concrete walls, an aspen wouldn't be an aspen. It would be a different name. So depending on how they build your home and how new it is, you're probably going to have some new names. Like the ones I gave you earlier. 
the spoonbill, <laughs> the tall pines, and the dove. I have no idea what those homes look like. Right. Those are re right, relatively right. new, and they're down that way. Mm -hmm. So, what, you're our ice maker over there? Yeah, here. There it goes. <laughs> How do you smell today? There's lots to do here in the villages. You can go to all kinds of venues the Sharon, the uh, Savannah Center, the Tierra del Sol, the small theater, the studio theater. And, today, and this week in uh, March 20, I'm going to start that over again. Okay. okay. There sure is lots to do here in the villages, entertainment-wise. You can go to music at the squares, restaurants. Um, there's uh, also many venues for plays and musical acts. The Savannah Center and the Sharon, and then the Studio Theater has wonderful plays. So this week at the Savannah Center, starting March 26th through the 28th, is Dirty Rotten Scoundrels. That's going to be a fun play. And then... David Letterman's coming on March 29th. We went to see them. Didn't we see them a long time ago at Ball State? We sure did. Did you hear that? Yeah. Did you hear that? Uh, you said David Letterman is coming. Oh, no, he's not coming. <laughs> Darn it, David's not coming. <laughs> David Letterman did go to Ball State where I went to school. But did the Letterman go there too? No. Did we see them? I don't know. We're too old to remember what we saw. Well, okay. On March 29th, the Letterman will be here. That will be a fantastic show. In fact, we heard one of our friends, his brother used to sing with the Letterman. Yeah, yeah. our friend Roxy, yeah, her Roxy. brother used to be a Letterman. That's awesome. I think that's I was the Letterman. <laughs> yeah, it was all the sports, right? Come on. <laughs> and at the Sharon this week is the Doo Wop Project, and that's tonight. And then the Studio Theater is finishing up the uh, Season 8 called The Roommate, and that's from March 26th through April 27th. So a lot of fun things. I also want to show you, not really entertainment, but if you get the newspaper, it's entertainment for me because I look through it and I find so much about the entertainment. You have a section in uh, the paper on Wednesdays. It tells you all about the entertainment. But, Let's see. Let me hold that up for you. Yeah. It's really neat. It's got, it shows the, the what's happening in all the theaters. And then on the inside, it will show you little snippets about each, each program. And so that's a great uh, part of the newspaper on Wednesdays. But if you get the newspaper, you're eligible for getting this too. Once a month, you're going to get the, the magazine and that's got a lot of information in it and nice articles. And then you also will get once a year, you're going to get the residential directory. It's quite big. <laughs> it's a great, a great uh, book. It's a phone book. Phone book. It's good. And then the next book you're going to get once a year is The Newcomer's uh, Guide. The Newcomer's uh, Guide. <laughs> Yeah. So this guide has a lot in it. It has uh, advertisements. It tells about all the rec centers. It tells about villages. It has lots of lots of lots of neat information. This is a this is a wealth of knowledge. I okay. love this book. All right. Anyway, entertainment. And I'll just say that uh, next month I know two shows that are coming to the Savannah Center. One is Leonid and Friends. That's a, a kind of a Chicago knockoff band. They are unbelievable probably every bit as good as chicago was yeah. it, with the brass it's and really the horns good. and the, they sing it's really good and the guess who you remember the guess who yeah. one of the original members is still did i say around the little right. yeah, one of the original right. members one of the original members is still with them and uh, they had some great songs it's time for out and about Today we stay close to home. Just a mile or so away is Belle Glade Country Club. And we've eaten there many times and we've usually had a really good experience. The view is magnificent. You can sit on the patio if you like and overlook the golf courses there. That's where we usually like to sit. I love that area. Yeah, and they have a full service bar. And a lot of times people will go there after their golf outings. Mm -hmm. But on this occasion, we had dinner with our friends Deb and John, and uh, we had good service from a young lady named Hanalea. And I got, as I like to do at different places, the roast beef dip. And I ordered crispy fries, you know. I, don't want, I never want fries you can tie a knot on. Yeah. And uh, the fries were great, and the sandwich looked good, but I, I'll be honest with you, it was super duper salty, way too salty. And I'm, I mean, I can take a lot of salt, you know that. Yeah. But it was way salty. 
I ate as much as I could, but I didn't even finish it. So that tells you a lot. No, no it was, I took a taste of it. It's really too salty. <laughs> Somebody must have just went, Ooh, too much. And I had sweet tea. They have really good sweet tea. And you had fish and chips. I was going to tell about that. Mm. I had fish and chips and I had uh, extra crispy fries as well. And I like to dip my uh, my french fries in ranch dressing. They brought me some of that. So I love that. And do you all like fish with malt vinegar on it? That's my favorite. Long John Silver's is a chain back home and they always serve the fish with malt vinegar and it's delicious on fish. That's my favorite. But I ate two pieces or uh, I think I had three pieces, but I ate two and I saved a piece for Jerry. And it was there were 10 bones in that yeah. piece of fish. Yeah. I mean, it was impossible to eat and it. He was trying to get bones out of his teeth for. About 10 minutes. It was just like, oh, Jerry, what's But we, we told the, the young lady, and she said, oh, okay. And uh, Deb had the same thing that you had, mm -hmm. except she got kettle chips. I love kettle chips, yeah. don't you? Yeah. John had corned beef. Look at that. It looks like prime rib. That and he said really it was good. real good. That really good. good. They both had a beer, John and Deb, and uh, Linda had water. I had the sweet tea, like I said. Our total bill came to $98 before tip. And in fairness to Belle Glade, we've had a lot of good meals there. Yeah. So this was not the norm, mm -hmm. and we will definitely go back because we like it. Well, in that particular night, we also got entertainment. There was music on the patio. Um, there was a St. Uh, Patrick's St. celebration. St. Patrick's Day celebration weekend. Yeah. So that was, it was a nice time, a lovely place to go. It is. No bloopers today. None. Look at that. I got a farmer stand. And what is the most important thing when picking a lake? And, 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 and a lot of ideas going yeah. on in that head. You said this blue. You said I was going to do them both, and then you did yeah, it. You stopped and forever. At how many people? Oh, God. There's too many words. There's a lot of words in that thing another edition of Mel. I said no bloopers today. Two. <laughs> go Steve, go. I don't think so. I know it was. Jerry's way too loud and Linda, I can't even hear her. Three. That will definitely be all the bloopers. Time for our view. Word jumble. That's right. And last week we gave you a toughie because <laughs> I wasn't putting the blanks down there. And all of you just let me know. First of all, you let me know it's too easy. It's too easy. It's too easy. Then I do it without the blanks, and everybody says it's too, too hard. hard. Too it's hard. too hard. <laughs> so I, I published the blanks on Facebook to let you all know. But the answer was Sheriff Bill Farmer. He's a Sumter icon that's rounding third and heading for home. He's retiring after be being the longest serving sheriff in Florida, yeah. I believe. Yeah. yeah. He's he, a great guy. Great guy. The clue to this week's puzzle. This is a good one. We all dread this kind of depression. And you see, back by popular demand, the blanks are down there. It's one word. There you go. Good luck to everybody. Remember, if you get it, let us know you got it. But don't tell us the answer because it spoils it for the people that are still trying to play. It's time for Sweet and Salty. <laughs> Jerry, you better take the salty. I'll take the salty. You want me to go first? Okay. This is from Sean Butler. He sounds like a nice fella. The Villages is a hell hole. It's an extraordinarily expensive place to live. Golf carts constantly cut you off with a bunch of old people that are trying to penny pinch every dang dollar. So? Uh, we did penny pinch every dollar before we got here. That's how we can... That's how we can live here. <laughs> Sean, I don't know what to tell you. Uh, we very seldom get cut off when we're driving. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, you know, 
like like Linda said, you, you if you're thrifty your whole life, you save your money and then you retire, and that's what we've done. And mm -hmm. um, I'm sorry you're angry about something, Sean. Yeah. Well, we like to end on a good note, and this is a nice note from Jean Hughes, Jerry and Linda. Your channel is the best. There are others I watch too. Rock roll. But I love how you both are so interesting and always kind to each other. You inspire everyone to be nicer to each other. I love your different segments, your golf cart rides, and lots of good people sharing their thoughts. She's a sweet lady. Yeah, that was nice. Thank she also so said a lot too. more. I, I actually cut that off there because, oh, you know, it was, it was a lot. Aww, and uh, well, she's very complimentary. And thank you, Jean. Thank you. Yeah, people, and she, you know, she is so sweet, but there are so many of you out there that have such good hearts. Yeah. And that's what we, we love to hear from you. Mm -hmm. We like to think positive. Yeah. It's time for those shout outs. Hey, as we usually do, it's time to recognize the friends of our channel. You can get to be a friend of our channel just by watching, by meeting us on the street, by writing a good comment, whatever. So enjoy seeing your names up there. We appreciate every single one of you. Thank you so much. Here's the funny picture that was sent to us by Lulu Sheridan. She caught me taking pictures at the Fancy Reagan concert. <laughs> Hey, you never know who's watching. You got to be careful, Jerry. She took a picture of me taking a picture. <laughs> and we got another one this week from Ram Man Tucson. And he sent us one of a webcam over at Brownwood Paddock Square. And he caught us watching a concert down there. Yeah. I, didn't, I, didn't, I don't even think about that. But if you want to see what's going on at Brownwood or at Sumter Landing or yeah. up at uh, Spanish Springs, you can go to the web, uh, go to the village's website and jump onto one of those uh, webcams and you can see what's happening. And he was spying on us. That is cool to see what information's going, what uh, what entertainment's going on, who's playing. And it's it's a, a fun thing to do. To you know what we should do? We should do something one day. Just go to one and and uh, see the first person to contact us while we're waving. See if anybody catches us on that there. That would be kind of cool. Yeah. Laurie and Scott Conkle recently closed on their beautiful home in Lake Denham, and they say that they are looking forward to living this lifestyle. Congratulations and welcome to you both. Thanks to Kelly and Jim Doyle for inviting us to their driveway party in Lake Denham. We've never ceased to be amazed by how many wonderful and nice people there are here in the villages. And Jim's wearing a kilt here for St. Patrick's Day. I really wanted to ask him, but I, I didn't know ask him. I did want to ask. <laughs> and we met Billy Jean O'Reardon at the same party. She said that uh, we told her that we'd see her when she got there, and she looked up, and there we were. <laughs> what a nice lady she is. This is a photo of Brian and Jamie, along with their daughter, who was home from spring break at the time. And we met them at the Ladies of Liberty driveway party. Yeah, but they didn't tell us what her name was. Uh, so, hey, you. <laughs> this is Steve and Kathy. They're from Merrimack, New Jersey, and we met them at Brownwood when Fancy Reagan was playing. And Kathy reminded me that she goes by Kathy B. in the 603. That's going to do it for this week's edition of... Handbag Monday. By the way, I want to tell you this is absolute true. A large number of you have, for some reason, been unsubscribed by YouTube. No! There doesn't seem to be any reason for it. We're hearing it from lots of other YouTubers that say their people have been unsubscribed. So please check and make sure you're subscribed. And that way you'll be notified every time something comes up. You know, like by pushing that little bell right there. If you haven't done it yet, please subscribe to our channel and follow us on Facebook. Until next time. See you when you get here. <laughs>